Um, okay, this is the, the era of massive, massive data flow. And this is the massive data flow that science has never, ever encountered before, right? So um, compared with the 20 years ago, we scientists always also have to change the way that we understand the world, right? But this massiveness is not a, a new one because I, I have a one single habit that I usually, usually do. That is, I, uh, I watch TV. But and I, I don't watch TV program, but I watch TV screen. Very close from the distance. So when you zoom into the screen, you have some, some dots, and beautiful dots, and coming, zoom in, zoom in, just beautiful, you know, uh, sparkling of dots, but you don't understand what this one is, but you can't stop watching it, right? <laughs> So such a beautiful time, you know. <laughs> I really like it, you know. I usually do this. Not only TV screen, but computers also, right? <laughs> but sometimes it's not a happy time, right? So uh, when I go to a very uh, foreign country, which I've never been there, I came out from the entrance of the subway, and I get out to the middle of nowhere, right? I mean, it's thousands of noises. Foreign language, I don't, I don't really I don't understand what they're talking about, right? I just, you know, where is the exit? I mean, <laughs> but stop doing that. Yeah. You have to enjoy your, uh, you know, embarrassing situation. But I can't do that, right? It's so confusing, so unhappy time, right? So these two times, uh, the massive data in everyday life, right? But it's not disadvantageous. I try to understand, you know, uh, we have a bunch of sensory organs in our, you know, uh, surface of the body, and this massive data is always coming to the brain, right? And it's, you know, our brain, our mind, must cope with this massive data flow, right? And this is impossible. How can it be possible, right? But then I try to take it around, right? Maybe the mind emerges from the complexity of multiple data flow. That's what I want to understand. Don't think about, you know, try to put things after you have much data flow, but much data flow emerges, you know, mind emerges from the much data flow, right? So to prove my theory, I made a virtual, uh, virtual machine and put it in a museum. Thanks for uh, welcome, it's the Yamaguchi Prefecture. Um, the output look is like this one. It's a huge one, a gigantic machine. We have uh, uh, 15 video cameras. It's uh, shooting the videos from one screen to the other screen and projecting onto the other screen, right? But there's uh, adaptive neural networks is running behind the system and try to modify the images and try to memorize the images, right? And then I let them run for three months. It's just running and running, and people coming in, and people go by, right? And what does it, what does it go, right? I just, this system, is not, is, there's no memory. I mean, though, there's no mind in, in, in for the first time. But then it gradually memorizes something that is going on there, right? Then you can... So this is the one of the examples that I see. But gradually, the system is so interesting, though it's so different in the morning time. So in the morning, you know, um, it looks more uh, calm um, because they, 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 need, they need a coffee probably, right? Just so uh, softly, you know, getting up. But they can also play music with uh, performers, live, live performers. They are playing the music with uh, 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 live performers. But also, when I... This is the very... The, 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 before the opening day, I, um, I finished it. So they say, they say hello to me. It's a, so it's a final, you know, uh, my sort of memory there that I, you know, I say goodbye to him, right, or her, maybe. So uh, my contention is, is that whether this is science or earth, right? People care. Well, do you do science or do you do earth? But it's okay. I don't care about whether it's science or earth. We have to integrate all my knowledge about science and earth. Try to understand what is life and what is mine. That's my mission. So that. Don't mimic biological life that exists already, right? You have to create a new kind of something that must be greater than, larger than life, biological life. Then this artificial life 
it may be quite different from what I, you know, uh, the existing life, but might be have some mind emerging on top of the complexity of the massive data flow. That's what I'm doing. Thank you very much. <laughs>